The goal of health and safety management is to reduce the risks that people are exposed to, to make the workplace a healthy and safe place to be. But how safe is safe enough? Clearly, if we all used unlimited resources, we could remove the risks altogether. But in reality, that wouldn't leave much room for profit and our businesses would fail. So what we need to try and achieve is a balance between the costs and effort of risk reduction and the actual benefits gained from that cost and effort. To show that you've done your due diligence, you'll need to consider the risk reduction options and then decide upon a cost-effective solution. A solution that reduces the risk to acceptable levels but isn't disproportionately expensive or time-consuming. You should also be finding out what other businesses in your industry are doing to manage their risks. Most industries have professional bodies or trade associations which will give advice on acceptable risk treatments and best practices. Then you can look at government health and safety guidance and codes of practice, manufacturer's specifications and recommendations and so on. Generally speaking, if the government of your country has published a code of practice or a regulation for a particular hazard or risk situation, then you'll need to follow that. It's easy to find out what these codes of practice or regulations are. For example, if you're in Canada and you're involved in asbestos removal, just Google Asbestos Regulations Canada and you'll have all the guidance you need instantly. In cases where that guidance isn't available, you should ask yourself the question, does the cost and trouble of providing more risk reduction treatments outweigh the benefits that those treatments will provide? If it does, then you've already provided what you need to and you've found the level of safety that is safe enough. If not, then you should consider using those additional controls. In 1949 in the UK, a landmark legal case used the term as low as reasonably practicable, or ALARP, to describe the level of risk reduction that was deemed appropriate for a business. In that case, a man had been killed by a roof collapse in an underground coal mine. The National Coal Board, who owned the mine, argued that it was not practical and too costly to install roof supports on all the underground tunnels. The court decided that it wasn't all of the tunnels that needed support, just the ones that required it. This meant that a risk assessment was needed to decide which of the tunnels would benefit from the trouble and cost of shoring up the roof. Essentially, that risk assessment is a cost-benefit analysis, which is something that most business owners are quite familiar with. Since that case, the ALARP concept has been enshrined in law in the UK, Australia, New Zealand and many other countries. Even in countries where it isn't required by law, ALARP still represents best practice and is a very useful concept for deciding how much effort should be invested in reducing a particular risk. In one of my classroom sessions, there was a self-employed advertising sign writer who often found himself up a ladder or using an elevated work platform to access billboards. As a group, we identified as many of the hazards as possible, working at heights, wind, traffic, other people and so on. We quickly realized that one of the biggest risks was injuries caused by collision of a vehicle with his elevated work platform. The sign writer then described his risk reduction treatments for the traffic issue. He used signs to alert drivers to the work that's going on, cones and danger tape to establish an exclusion zone, and a spotter to watch out for any other hazards. Since we decided that this was probably a reasonably high risk activity, we then looked at additional risk treatments. One option that was raised was to remove the hazard completely by shutting off the road and preventing vehicle access to the vicinity of the work area. Now, obviously this is a very effective risk treatment, but it's also a very expensive one that also impacts upon a wide range of people. So we decided that the cost and trouble involved in shutting off access to the road would vastly outweigh the risk reduction benefits and that his current controls are safe enough. Following your industry's published best practice is the easiest way to ensure that what you're doing is within the accepted normal level of risk. But when that isn't available, try to think of that balance between the cost and trouble of risk reduction and the benefits that it will provide.
The position of the balance will give you the answer as to whether you should use those extra controls or whether you're already safe enough.